Hello, this video is a continuation of a previous video in which I introduced transformation matrices. In this second part of the presentation, I will focus on basic transformation operations and their composition. Therefore, the aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to understand basic transformation operations such as translation and rotation in each of the axes of a reference frame. Then we will focus on the composition of transformation operations, which can be done with respect to the fixed frame, that is the one that doesn't change, or, or the mobile frame, that's the one that changes as we apply transformations. Finally, we will analyze the importance of understanding the difference between pre-multiplication and post-multiplication operations of homogeneous transformation matrices. We will start by describing the basic transformation of a translation operation. As it can be seen, it is a homogeneous matrix with a last column with the coordinates of the translation vector t. In the case of a rotation in X, we have that the homogeneous transformation is composed on the one hand of a 3x3 submatrix corresponding to the rotation matrix in X, and on the other hand, the translation component of the homogeneous matrix, which is a vector with zeros. Please note that in each of the rotation operations, the column and row related with the corresponding rotation is filled with zeros, but the pivoting element, which contains a 1. Similarly, we can obtain the basic transformation matrices with respect to a rotation in Y. And in the same way, we would do it with respect to a rotation in Z. The fact is that these four basic transformations are the basis for composing any transformation in a 3D space. As we saw in the previous presentation, a general transformation will be composed of a 3x3 rotation submatrix and a 3x1 translation vector as a result of applying rotation and translation operations. To compose a sequence of transformations, we can perform successive multiplications in both OXYZ, the fixed reference frame, and OUVW, the mobile reference frame. However, it is very important to consider that matrix multiplication does not satisfy the commutative property, and therefore, the order of transformation it is important. In the case of performing a transformation with respect to the OXYZ fixed frame, we must apply a pre-multiplication, which means that to the current transformation matrix, we must pre-multiply a basic transformation matrix. On the other hand, if the transformation is performed with respect to the OUVW, the mobile frame, then the resulting transformation matrix is the result of the current transformation matrix post multiply with the basic transformation matrix we want to apply. Now we will study the case of performing a pre-multiplication. Specifically, if we have a reference frame that is generally defined with a homogeneous transformation matrix T0, and on the other hand, we intend to apply a transformation matrix T1 with respect to the fixed frame, then we must perform a pre-multiplication operation. As you can see, the resulting rotation submatrix is nothing more than the multiplication in the proper order of rotation submatrices. However, the new translation term will depend on T1 transformation to be performed as a result of transforming T1, the homogeneous point, T0, 1. Also keep in mind that if we only apply a translation or rotation operation, obviously these uh, expressions uh, are simplified. Similarly, but in the opposite way, we can obtain a generic transformation as a result of applying a post-multiplication. In this case, again, we can observe that the resulting rotation submatrix is nothing more than the multiplication in the proper order of rotation submatrices, while the new translation term will depend on the transformation T0 as a result of multiplying T0 with a homogeneous point, T11. Again, the expressions can be simplified if we only apply a translation or a rotation. So we, we are going to see some examples that will allow us to visually uh, see the implications of different translation and rotation operations. In this first example, we will see the result of applying a translation with respect to the x-axis. As a result, we obtain the reference frame OUVW'. On the other hand, if the translation is made with respect to the u-axis of the mobile reference frame, the same, the same uh, op uh, operation will have a different uh, translation result 
In this case, we must perform a post-multiplication operation. Similarly, if we apply a rotation in X with respect to the fixed frame, we observe that the mobile frame moves and also rotates because of the origins O and O' prima are not coincident. The new origin will be located in O prime prime, as you can see. And if, on the contrary, we perform the rotation with respect to the mobile frame, in this case the origin will be the same, O prima prima and O prima. However, the orientation in this case is different because the axis, uh, we have applied a rotation with respect to a different axis. Before it was with respect to the x axis, and now the rotation is with respect to the u axis. Furthermore, transformation matrix will allow us to express the transformation, that is, the translation and rotation between two arbitrary reference frames. The notation that we will use to express this transformation between reference frame is the one we show, being O2, the reference frame we want to express with respect to O1, with O2 in the sub-index and O1 in the super-index. The inverse relation of a transformation matrix will allow us to express this transformation, but with respect to change reference frame, that is, the transformation of O1 with respect to O2. As you can see, the inverse of a transformation matrix implies that the term relative to the rotation is transposed, and the term of the translation is the translation vector multiplied by the transposed rotation matrix with the sign change. As you can see, we don't need to remember how to inverse a 4x4 a matrices, we just simply need to remember how to perform the transpose of a 3x3 uh, rotation matrix and also to know how to multiply a matrix with a vector. This uh, relation between reference frames allows us to construct transformation graphs, in which we can find out the transformation with respect to any reference frame that typically appears in a robotic system. For example, there is a transformation WTR between the wall frame and the robot frame. Likewise, we can also get a transformation between the robot frame and the end effector frame, noted here as RTE transformation, and of course between the end effector and the tool frames, the ETT transformation. On the other hand, we can know the transformation of an object with respect to the world and the transformation of the tool to the object, the OTT transformation. We might be, for instance, interested in this last transformation, the OTT, let's say, to find out how far or close the tool is with respect to the object. Also, we might be interested in knowing the position of the end effector with respect to the robot base so we can grip an object, which implies that the tool will be known in this case. For, uh, or the position uh, of the, the tool with respect to the object needs to be known for a proper gripper, uh, gripping. As you can see, all these transformations are easy to express by multiplying transformation matrices in the proper order as shown in the transformation graph. By applying basic algebra, we can try to find out the value of one of these transformations if the rest of the transformations are known. During this process, we might need to compute the inverse of some transformation matrices, but as we saw before, this is rather quite straightforward. In this video, we have expanded the concepts related to transformation matrices, specifically those related to basic transformation matrices and their composition. Thank you very much.